in the face of the challenges of climate change and the depleting natural resources. Humans are exploring feasible solutions to sustainable development. Green technology can be one of the good options. Since 2009, Malaysia has been facilitating the application of green technology through implementing the National Green Technology Policy. Over the centuries, humans have tried to change the weather. People have prayed and used strategies to get more rain and decrease the heat. While we have not intentionally tried to change the climate, we have unintentionally brought about changes that are affecting us today. Starting in the middle 1700s, the Industrial Revolution and the modern agricultural practice began to alter the amount of human-created carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere. Global carbon dioxide emissions have been rising at an annual average of 2.7% during the past decade. Countries all over the world are used different techniques to reduce carbon emissions. These include establishing carbon markets, creating policy and legislation, and green technology. My research has focused on green technology in Malaysia. But do you know what green technology is? Green technology is the development and application of products, equipment, and systems that conserve natural resources which minimizes and reduces negative environmental impact of human activities. What makes the technology green? It minimizes environmental degradation. It has zero or low green gas emissions. It is safe to use and promotes a healthy environmental for all life firms. It conserves energy and natural resources. It relies on renewable resources. Green technology is not a new concept. People have been trying to go green for decades, including using wind motors, wind turbines, solar power plants, and other alternative energy ideas. In keeping with global trends, Malaysia has recently proactively promoted and adopted green technology. In 2009, Malaysia has established the country's Ministry of Energy, Green Technology and Water, also called KEDA in Malay, and adopted National Green Technology Policy. The main goal is to contribute to economic growth and to reduce Malaysia's carbon footprint. The objective of the policy is to connect industrial and government through supporting green buildings, green transportation, renewable energy use, waste and water management. The most important components of this policy include setting up institutions and launching fiscal instruments. Setting up institutions is a key strategy in the policy. Since green technology involves many different sectors, it is important to have a structure that involves all the relevant stakeholders to ensure consensus and support. The National Green Technology and Climate Change Council coordinates green technology issues between the ministries, agencies, the private sector, and other stakeholders that implement policies. In addition, the agencies that assist and contribute to the development of green technology, like the Green Technology Corporation, as a focal point for green technology development in Malaysia, green technology cooperation provides facilities and services in advisory and consultancy, and energy management and training. Malaysia's green technology finance scheme is the most important fiscal instrument to attract private entities to use green technology. This scheme is for both the users and producers of green technology. It was initially started with a 1.5 billion ringgit soft loan and has now increased to 3.5 billion ringgit. The scheme offers a 2% interest subsidy and 60% of the loan will be guaranteed by the government. From 2009 to November 2014, 
351 projects were covered by this scheme, including 243 energy efficiency projects, 17 green building projects, 91 waste and water projects. The majority of projects are located in Kuala Lumpur, Silano, and Johobalu. Most of projects focus on electrical and electronics subsector and biotechnology subsector. Besides the action stipulated from the ministry level, we can also see some progress at the regional level. Iskandar Malaysia is an important economic corridor in the southern part of Peninsula Malaysia. It has recently begun low carbon programs. The low carbon blueprint Iskandar Malaysia 2025 was endorsed by the Prime Minister of Malaysia in December 2012. This blueprint was prepared by a group of urban planners and researchers. Professor Hong Chin Song from University Technology Malaysia is a main member of this team. I think green technology policy uh, is a very important policy because uh, it focuses on the use of green technology in city building or city planning. So in our contact here, we are trying to uh, use energy efficiency technology. We are trying to use renewable energy uh, technology and also recycling the solid waste management and all those. Urban planning have to reconsider how to uh, promote green technology or green energy or green transport or green industry in, in, in city planning. So I think this is the way forward for Malaysian uh, development. Although Malaysia has made progress in promoting green technology, interviews with government officials, researchers and industrial firms show that many pieces are still missing. First, information about green technology and policies are still very limited. I conducted a questionnaire in 15 factories. It shows that one of the main barriers for industrial firms to use green technology is information. The government intention, intention is good, but sometimes the SME are facing another challenges when it comes to the green technology or green industries. You know, sometimes when we work, when we work to get someone to, to justify that you are in the green industry, so sometimes you cannot get the right person confirm to justify that we are in that field. Sometimes we may not be able to get the incentive that uh, make provision to the SME by the government. So this is another challenge that we are facing. Uh, some of this information may not have reached all the industrialists. But I think the important part is actually this information have to be disseminated to a, to a bigger group. And then I think um, uh, we strongly feel that the Chamber of Commerce or industrial uh, association to work closely, also trying to get to know more about this uh, green tech. I think the, the ministry themselves also know they are, they are trying ways and means uh, to disseminate this information so that actually more and more people have opportunity to access to this uh, green tech fund. Did you heard about that green technology policy? Uh, what, what? Green technology. I myself, I, I will like all the all these things, mm -hmm. green energy. Now maybe they are used more on this uh, solar energy, yeah. wind energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, I think these are the two main things they are using now. Yeah. Uh, so solar energy, actually, I myself have using it. Mm, now they use it for as a hobby. But later on, when I know more about it, mm -hmm. maybe I will use it uh, partially to reduce my company's. Mm -hmm. uh, electricity to replace uh, to the supplies to cut down the cost. Secondly, there is a mismatch between the needs of the firms and the focus of government programs. According to the questionnaire, industrial firms' priorities were wastewater, energy utilization, solid waste, energy supply, and green buildings. However, most of the government incentives go to energy projects, mostly for solar. We feel that too much of uh, emphasis has been given to solar and we are trying to uh, look into other areas like uh, thermal energy and also attack mm -hmm. the ocean uh, thermal energy, venturing into new, new energies as well. Because initially the green technology concentration was only by the federal government. Uh, we didn't uh, incorporate with the state governments. As you can see, uh, the green technology council is a federal council. But 
this year, I'm mistaken, starting from this year, we have already encouraged all the state governments to have their own uh, Green Technology Council in state level. So once the state level has their own Green Technology Council, so this kind of information can be dispersed more in, in, in the particular states. So then you can see, uh, now I, I, I do agree with you, that mm. the awareness is, is pretty much low. To improve the weak implementation, there is urgent need to have evaluation of the policy. Until now, there has no assessment of the green technology policy implementation. I've been doing so much, I've been giving investment, I mean, uh, creating a scenario for the investment for the green technology players, but then, as I can tell you, that we are not very sure how much benefit incurred by these people. So and how much green technology has contributed to the policy itself. Adopting green technology will not be easy for developing countries. The most important reason is that green technology is a comparatively expensive approach. Even in developed countries, we still can see that the arguments about if government should invest in green technology. But it is clear from the experience from Malaysia the government incentives are still very important to encourage green technology. People say that only uh, developing countries I mean, uh, concentrate too much on subsidies and incentives, but actually it's, it's a worldwide scenario. Uh, last month I went to Holland, Netherlands. As you can see, Netherlands is a very developed country and they really pay much attention to the environment. They are very environment friendly people, but they have, when it comes to transport industry, the government in 2013 they came up with this incentive for uh, green, I mean, electric vehicles and also plug-in electric vehicles. So when the incentive was introduced in 2013, the sales of EV rocketed, and the highest sale goes went to uh, Mitsubishi Outlander. It's known as PHEW. It's actually a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. But when the Incentive ended by 31st December 2013. Sale of electric vehicles in uh, Netherlands yeah. dropped oh. tremendously in 2014. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, like the lifestyle of people, I mean, the consumers are very much related to incentives and subsidies. Secondly, for developing countries, having consensus will be equally critical for launching green technology actions across every area, from construction to transportation, to industry. Malaysia has developed incentive policies, but the local government needs to be involved for the knowledge to be diffused across the country. This is also an important law for other non-government institutions, such as industrial associations. So where is the funding of SME come from? The funding of SME? No, we have no funding. No. Yeah, we totally do not have funding because uh, we should be self-funded, I think. No. Self-funded. So sometimes, you know, when the, we talk about the funding for the R&D, R&D is a long-term investment. You know, at the beginning stage, you may not see any benefit at all. So, but you have to come up with a lot of, a lot of resources. For the green product or green industries or even the... We still have to, the government has, has, still have to take the lead, you know, uh, whether with the university or whether with the industry. I think the government should take the lead. Um, I do not have doubt that in terms of the green wine, green technology, green industry, we are still so much behind in some of the countries in our region. You know, like Japan, Taiwan, or even like China, I think we are still so much behind. So we hope that the government will play their role, leading the we are uh, also blaming some of the ministries, you know, like certain information that never sent across. That's why the association is playing a very important role on this part. And sometimes we are trying to link up the government and to the, to, the, to the industry or to the players. Besides the government support, both federal and the local government, and the cooperation from other associations, public education and capacity building for the labor force are also important. No matter how difficult it is, people in Malaysia have become aware that behavior change is much important. Without behavior change, nothing will happen. We should not only look at mitigation, we have to look at adaptation. 
adaptation meaning to say that also we have to how to adapt to this climate change. So mitigation can be expensive, adaptation should come in together. And I think the most challenging part is the mind chain, the mindset. How do you, how do you uh, promote a low carbon society to the local society so that they have mind, the mind change, their mindset changing from very high consumption to a low consumption society. So by doing that, they could cut down their waste, they could cut down their consumption, and they could actually improve their quality of life even without uh, having a very high consumption. So I think uh, mindset change is very important. That's why in our campaign, we, we started, we call it low carbon society. We don't call it low carbon city. In developing countries, the government and the citizens are eagerly looking for ways to grow economically, but at the same time, protect environment and mitigate global climate challenges. Critics of green technology is that it's a very expensive investment for developing countries and that it's not easy to get access and adopt because of knowledge barriers. From 2009, Malaysia has taken steps to implement green technology. Each step has not been easy. The Malaysia experience with promoting green technology can provide insights for other developing and developed countries.